Their pose is unmistakable. Their temperament, loyal and kind. On this episode of The Paul Report, we introduce you to David Trigg, a man who loves life and his pointers. More on his story is coming up, so stay with us. Okaw Vet Clinic in Tuscola and Dr. Sally Foote remind you to properly take care of your pets and are happy to help support the Paw Report on WEIU. Okaw Vet Clinic located at 140 West Sale Street in downtown Tuscola. More information available at okawvetclinic.com. Dave's Decorating Center is a proud supporter of the Paw Report on WEIU. Dave's Decorating Center features the Mohawk Smart Strand Silk Forever Clean Carpet. Dave's Decorating Center, authorized Mohawk Color Center in Charleston. Well, the Paul Report decided to go on location again, and on this episode, we're near Lerna, Illinois, at High Point Kennels, and we're joined by David Trigg and his wonderful story and his dogs and his family here at High Point Kennels. So thank you for inviting us out to your beautiful land here, about 25 acres you mentioned that you have yes, here on, yes. on the kennels. And today we're gonna talk about a very special uh, breed of dog, breeds of dogs, very special to your heart, and that is the pointers. So thank you for joining us for this episode. Much like your human family, you have another family that's important to you, and that's your dogs. Tell us about your dogs. Oh yeah, my dogs were, <clears throat> Everything's about my dogs, of course, my wife too. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I look, I do everything for my dogs. I have English pointers and I have German short hair pointers. And uh, I, of course, the hot days we can't run them on hot days because they're such hardworking dogs. But uh, in the better days, early mornings, late evenings, I can work my dogs, and that keeps. I think that's what keeps me going. Keeps mm -hmm. me young. <laughs> That's good. We need that. Tell yeah. us about the breed. Um, how long have you been uh, working with pointers, and why did you select that particular breed? I've I've worked with uh, I've had pointers uh, off and on my whole life. Uh, really got serious the last ten or twelve years. This time with the German short hairs, I just want to try the German short hair pointer, and uh, I really like the German short hair pointer. I think they're smarter dogs. They're easier to train. If anybody was ever to get wanted to start in the dog business, I would recommend the short hair because they're almost self-taught. And but then I had the opportunity to get this English pointer, and so I picked her up, and she's a great dog, and and I've done a lot of winning with her, and she's uh. The, the English Pointer are so athletic, they're, they're more fun to watch because they're, they're just working dogs. But I think the, the short hairs are a little smarter. So I couldn't decide which one I wanted, so I got them both. <laughs> <laughs> tell us about both breeds. <clears throat> um, what makes them so special to you? What, you know, tell us about the breed, maybe where they originated, and just in all these years working with them, um, their attributes. The German short hair. What I've read about the German short hair is a, is a, a, a like a bloodhound from Germany, mixed with a French pointer, and you get the German short hair. That's what I've read. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not 100% on that. The English pointer, I'm not sure how they got originated. Mm -hmm. But the uh, and, and some of the guys I think are. I don't know how they do it and get away with it, with the uh, paperwork, because my dogs are registered. They got to be registered to run the field trials that I run in. I think some of the guys are getting a little bit of the English pointer blood into the German short hairs, which throws a little more drive into them, and that's the ultimate dog. And they're a hunting dog, so yes. you spend a lot of time with them um, out here on your property working and training. Let's talk about that process. You've got a pup in your kennels, mm -hmm. Blue. She's yep. four months old. She's yep. darling. You said she was kind of a chick magnet, and I believe it. <laughs> she's <laughs> yes, a cutie. She but how do you, you know, when you get a pup, 
how do you take that pup and start training them? I mean, you said pointers just have that instinct. They have that hunt instinct in them. They just, oh, they, yes. your dog specifically, they just know what to do, but there's still a lot of training that's involved to get them to do what they do. So let's talk about the training and then specifically, you know, take me through a training day out here and what you do and how you work with them. Well, first of all, like the pup blue, <clears throat> I'll take her out here uh, every evening that I can and just let her be a pup, just, just let her run. Uh, and you know, she's maybe a little over three months old now and it'll probably be another three months before I introduce her to any birds and just to see what she will do. But I'll never pressure her any of my pups till they're almost a year old because I feel like you're taking away some spirit I don't want to put any pressure on them till they're, till they're old enough to take it. And if you know dogs, you you know I've had dogs that you could pressure before then, because they're bolder. But I, I don't like to I don't like to pressure them too early. Uh, she's I don't know I still don't know what she's going to be. She could be good and she may not be so good. I don't know yet. Nobody knows. You really don't know for a year and a half, two years, really what you have, as far as a competitive dog if you want to compete. When you say good, what do you mean by, I don't know if she's going to be good or not? What makes a good pointer? The first thing I want to see is the brain. They got to be a smart dog. That's first. Second, I want them to have a good sense of smell, good nose. Third, I want good drive. Drive is not, drive is, is good, but it's not as, as important as a smart dog. And a smart dog, you, you know a smart dog, if, he, if, if, if a guy, w if I was to take birds out there on my four-wheeler and that dog decides to follow that track, he knows to follow that track, that four-wheeler track, <clears throat> because if he follows that track, he knows not far from there, there's going to be a bird. He knows I put that bird out there not far from that track. There's a, there's a lot of di little things that you see in a dog that, that'll make it smart. Uh, if he picks up on retrieving the bird real fast, he'll, he's a smart dog. Uh, I, like, I kind of like some of the things I'm seeing on Blue right now. She's uh, just little things like when I reach up to open the gate, she looks and watches me open up the gate. She watches me shut the gate. Just little things like that I, I kind of pick up on to see how smart they are. And then, of course, the nose, you're going to see how good their nose is pretty quick. They'll make a distant point, like from 20 feet away. they got a good nose. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of variables in there. you got to have wind conditions. Today's a good day. It's humid. Mm -hmm. we got a little breeze. If there's no breeze, then the dog's going to have a tough time. Is there a lot? You said a lot of this is obedience. Um, yes. What is that training process like? And, and I've been out in the field with you and I've watched you with a couple of your dogs and you have um, signals and you have vocal things that you say to the mm -hmm. dogs mm -hmm. and you repeat that over and over. Yeah. Uh, what do they mean and, and is that something like when you, when you train them young, that's what you do? Yeah, that goes back to when, in the, when they're young. Like you've seen me whoa my dog out there when they're, when they're young. You throw your hand up, whoa. And that's kind of jars them when they see that hand come up and you, you say whoa at the same time. So then they finally get, us, get these two connected. They know whoa means stop. Mm -hmm. uh, when, you, when you're teaching dog, a lot, a, lot of, a lot of hand signals come into play because they're watching more than listening. So you use your hands to, and I didn't show you out there, but I can, I can, when I can throw my arm to the right or the left, and they will go that direction, mm -hmm. and that's pretty simple to train that. When I started doing that, I'll go like that, and I'll walk that way. Then the dog will walk with me that way, same way this way. So eventually, you can just go like that, and they're that. Dogs are a smart dog is easy to train. <laughs> How often do you have to work with them? Is it a daily thing? Is it a forever thing? Oh, like I said a while ago, it depends on the dog. Like, uh, you can, my dogs are pretty well 
trained. Uh, I, I took them out last night and last week, and you you just have to you can see what they it, it sticks with them. But like I told you all ago, it, they need conditioned when especially when you're going to get into running them hard, and that's uh, about all I can tell you about that. But Sometimes, especially the pointer breed, they're pretty hard-headed. Sometimes they'll 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 get a mind of their own. <clears throat> so I'll have to take them out and train them. You know, pull get that back out of them. It might take four or five sessions. Mm -hmm. And that, that that's another thing. It, everything everything's repetition. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. You just... When you compete with your dogs, and and you mentioned that you may be hosting uh, a competition here. What, what is involved in a competition? So people will bring their dogs. You know, I, I, I've seen trials. I've seen, you know, the jumping, the agility. What is involved with, with bird dogs? The trial itself? Mm -hmm. The competition. Uh, what will happen, we'll have a judge. Uh, we'll, put the, we'll put the handler in the blind so he can't see where the birds are planted. The planter will put three birds out here in his field. Usually it's a seven to 12 acre field. And now then that you start them, it's all on time. You, you start your dog, he's on the clock. He's got to, he's got to, uh, the dog has got to make a three second point. The handler flushes the, the bird, the handler will get the bird. And the dog's got to retrieve the bird after, the do after he's shot, after the bird is shot. Then, at, then the the handler cannot move. You got to stay. That dog's got to bring it all the way back. That's a bag bird. That's one out of the way. You got to do three birds. And it's all timed. It's all in time. Yep. And if you don't, if you, if you don't get the bird, there's points taken away. If you move, there's take. You get penalized. So if everything goes right and you get your three birds in five minutes, you're done good. Hmm. You got a 15 minute. You got 15 minutes to do all this. After 15 minutes, your time's up. If you don't, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to switch gears here for a minute and go from David Trigg, the the handler, the trainer, and the competitor, to to Dave Trigg, the man, and and special memories that you have with dogs. Because all of us that are pet owners, we all have a a special memory that that we can share. And um, your dogs have a very special place in your heart. And, um, you know, you had a, a scare in your life uh, about five years ago. And when I talked about your human family being your wife and your other family, would, which is your dogs, they played an important part in that uh, situation about five years ago. Tell us about, about that and how the dogs helped you through that. Well, they helped me. Uh, it's great. Uh, everybody, yeah, I, I, that... Uh... When I was laying in the hospital, you know, every day I thought about my dogs and, you know, I could just picture them every day and I wanted to be with them so bad <clears throat> that I knew when I, like I said, when I got home, that's the first place I went was to the kennel and it just made me so happy and, and, and of course you've seen me run my dogs out here. I, I did one and I got another one running another, but this time... I just popped open all the gates, and we all went out. They was running all over the place out here, and that that was one of the greatest feelings that I'd had. You yeah. had a scare with cancer. Yes. Take us and, and take us back to when you when you found out about that and what you went through, and then again just that that closeness that you had with the dogs and your wife to help you get through that. Oh yeah, that's that's what got me kept me dr driving it was of course my wife and my dogs that's the two things that that kept me driving other than that you know I probably wouldn't have cared if uh, about cancer if it got me it got me because like like I said before it's uh it, it, cancer got a lot of my family and I just knew it would take me too but but with my my wife and my dogs I wanted to keep going for them so I fought hard and I, I, I kept pumped up and done everything Jack Moody told me to do. And it just, that the dogs, is, yeah, the dogs is, 
uh, a big part of it. They, they, I couldn't wait to get home to, <laughs> to they, to see my dogs and take care of them. And they told me uh, at the hospital when I was fighting cancer, you know, you do this and you do that, a couple of things, and when you when you reach that point, you can you can go home and. and Boy, I done everything I could to to to, to get home to play with these silly dogs. <laughs> <laughs> they they're so smart. You most people don't believe how smart a dog is. If you just take the time and and play with them and work with them, and you wouldn't believe how smart dogs are. They are they're so intelligent. They I can. I can I can see like that one pup we had we had a little house dog, and the, it, she liked her belly rubbed, and so you work with things like that. I thought, well, I'm going to make something out of this. This is going to be good. <laughs> so I would say, bang, she'd always flop upside down on her belly rub. So I'd say, bang, and I'd rub her belly, bang, rub her belly. After a few days, I'd say, bang, she would flop all upside down. So pretty soon, anywhere in the room, I'd go bang. <laughs> She'd flop upside down. It looked she like was I ready shot her. For a rub. <laughs> so, you, yeah, if you just watch these dogs, you you can you can use their own natural instincts and make something out of it. They're mm-hmm. so smart. T- take me through a typical day here. Um, you know, you get up and and how do you uh, take me through your day with your dogs? Well, I get, of course, I get up and. Of course, I feed the dogs and water dogs, clean everything out, wash everything out. And of course, when I'm feeding them, I'm telling, telling them every morning that you're getting biscuits and gravy today, and, <laughs> or they might be getting uh, bacon and egg, you know, because uh-huh. it's always dog food. Right, right. And uh, if I'm going to work them, then uh, I f- I'll feed them light. I don't want to feed them heavy when I'm going to work them. And you always make sure they have water. Don't let them, let them run out of water. And and don't let them get too hot. If you're coming home from a kennel or a trial, keep them cool. Stop every hour or two. But when I'm ready to work them, I'll, you've seen what I did. I'll just take one at a time. I'll go set some birds out, take one at a time and set them out. And you know, I see if I, and if the dog gets too close, uh, I'll pick her up and set her back. And if, if, all, if, they, if they try to jump in, yeah, I can watch a dog and tell if she's wanting to jump in. Then I'll make her hold it for quite a while, make sure she don't jump in. And then I'll put her up, and I'll I'll try I'll do all my dogs in one day. Mm-hmm. Now, if I see where a dog needs more attention, I'll come home that evening, and I'll work that dog again. Well, the rest of them would stay in the kennel. But some of them they'll pick up on that a bad habit and. You got to correct that. If you wait too long, you you got a job. <laughs> <laughs> Do pointers make good family pets? Um, obviously, they're athletic. They love to work. They love to run the fields. Um, good family dog. Yeah, I have other good character. They're very loyal. Yes, they are. I have friends that's got the their bird dogs are in the house. Uh, the the English pointer is not so much as their German short hair pointer. You see the German Whoa. short hair pointer because they're not as rammy. Whoa. You see them in a lot of homes because they're Whoa. so pretty and they're not Whoa. so rammy. Good with children? Good Whoa. with children, yes. I had, I had one. Of course, she was getting older and Whoa. I was afraid of her Whoa. around children because we don't have any children running around here. But okay. she was getting older and I was afraid that she, I always kept, kept a tight leash on her. But other than that, I, no, I've never seen, I've never seen a, a mean short hair. I've never seen a, a mean pointer. And there, there are, uh, most of our hunting breeds are, they're all good. Mm-hmm. I might have seen one or two uh, pointing dogs that was, uh, you better watch, that was Henri. Mm-hmm. And I think, I, especially the one I'm thinking I have, I think was man-made. I think uh, that goes back in the breeding. I think I think this guy bred this dog too young. I think it messed with his mind because I knew he they, he was breeding that dog mm-hmm. young. 
and I think a dog should be two years old before you think about breeding that dog, mm -hmm. male or female. Hmm. You know, I've been asked this question, and I'm sure pet owners, dog owners, are always asked this question. And when I find me asking myself this question, it's sort of hard to put into words. So I'm going to ask you the same question, and, and you may have to think about it. What gives you the most joy out of your dogs? Every day, you know, when you... I know that when I talk to you about speaking about your dogs, you just kind of lit up. Like, well, of course, I'd love to talk to you about my dogs. Right. But what gives you the most joy when you think about those guys over there? That's, that's a good question. It's hard, isn't it? Yes, because there's so many things that just went through my head right now that it's awfully hard. I, I, I guess that's just watching them running at their their own free spirit is good. But what I really enjoy is the young dogs, I think. Uh, I, I like to watch them learn. Once, once the, you know, I got a couple out here that's that's polished off. They're, they're, uh, they do it all. I, I like to work with young ones and, and watch them do that. I feel like that I succeeded in, in training this dog to do this, but I feel like the dog did too. I, I just love training young dogs and watch them, watch them grow and watch them do good. It, the young dogs, I think, is the funnest part. Um, but Here. when you get into a field trial and you make a three-minute run, hey. <laughs> Look at you smile now. You can just picture that. Oh, I yeah. can see you. Well, your, your wheels are turning up there. Oh, there's so many times if I just make a good run out in the middle of the field, if I make a good run, I'm down there hugging that dog, kissing that dog. It, it's just... In fact, that one that I remember that one time that I, I knew if I made a three minute run, this dog was going to be a winner. And I'd had to shoot left handed because I had the port over here. I taught myself to shoot left handed so I could compete. And, and I got pretty good at it. And I had to shoot that bird left handed. This is my third bird. I had to shoot it left handed. And boy, did I bear down and I shot that. In the, and when I got it, that dog brought it to me. I knew I had a one, and I, I hugged that dog. And the judge said, well, come on, you're done. I said, give me this minute. I'm not going anywhere yet, and I just <laughs> hugged that dog. And, yeah, we end up winning that sucker, and, and that, do it, that I think that probably just tickles you more than anything is when you make a good run and you know it's going gonna, it's gonna to do it. Mm-hmm. Oh, you, uh, you love it. You, you just hug that dog. Because he's your buddy. And that, he's, your, he's your friend. Yeah. And, and that happened on another trial that that was Rosie. That uh, She made a two-minute run. I've never made a two-minute run. And and that's a, again, that judge tried to tell me to come on. We're going over here. And I said, no, not till I'm done here. Not till I'm done <laughs> I said, celebrating. I, I told him that. I've already saved you time with a two-minute run. Give me a minute to love my dog. <laughs> and he laughed. He, uh, he, he's good. It's all, it's all good. Well, we have loved spending some time with you, learning about your, your kennels here and your dogs and, and your love for them. So thank you so much for inviting the Paw Report out here to High Point Kennels near Lerna and David Trigg. Thank you so much for joining oh, us. Oh, thanks for coming out. All right. And we'll see you next time right here on the Paw Report. If you're a veterinarian, trainer, groomer, specialist, rescue organization, or shelter that would like to partner with the Paw Report by providing expert guests for the show, please contact us by emailing weiu at weiu.net or call 217-581-5956. If you have a topic you'd like to see on the show or questions for our experts, contact us with those too. Dave's Decorating Center is a proud supporter of the Power Report on WEIU. Dave's Decorating Center features the Mohawk Smart Strand Silk Forever Clean Carpet. Dave's Decorating Center, Authorized Mohawk Color Center in Charleston. 
Oka Vet Clinic in Tuscola and Dr. Sally Foote remind you to properly take care of your pets and are happy to help support the Paw Report on WEIU. Oka Vet Clinic located at 140 West Sale Street in downtown Tuscola. More information available at okavetclinic.com.